Good morning, Tableview Methodist Church. I welcome you to our 8.45 or 10.30 a.m. service. If it's the 8.45 service, then the service is in English. If it's 10.30, then our service is in English and is closer. I uh, pray that you would join with us in worship as I've invited various people to lead us in prayers and in items of worship during the service today. Hilton and Cheryl will uh, greet us and lead us in our opening prayers this morning. Good morning, Tableview family. We welcome you all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Good morning. We welcome all our visitors who are visiting us for the first time, no matter where you find yourself in your faith. May you hear Jesus Christ in your hearts today. We as a family serve the body of Christ in word and deed. Let us all say, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to remember that you are here with us. May we pray to you in faith. Sing your praise with gratitude and listen to your word with eagerness through Christ our Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning to say thank you for the new day, Lord. Father God, we praise and glorify you this morning that you've given us a new opportunity, a new day for new life, Jesus Christ. Lord, we praise you for you have given us this opportunity to touch other people's lives again by word, by deed, O oh Lord, by just listening to someone's pain, Father God. We say thank you that we have this opportunity. Father God, you are the vine, we are the branches. Whoever abide in you and you in us will bear much fruit. For apart from you, Lord, we can do nothing. So, Father God, come and abide in us. Wherever each and every one of us is in our homes, O oh Lord, we say thank you, Father God, that we not just in a building together, but we in different homes and we meet you together as a body, as Christ. So, Father God, we say thank you that you come and abide now in us, O oh Lord, and we will hear you so thank you jesus christ for our lives thank you for your love thank you for your mercy we pray this all in the name of jesus amen we sing the hymn jesus calls us here to worship jesus calls us here to meet him as through word and song and prayer We affirm God's promised presence Where His people live and care Praise the God who keeps His promise Praise the Son who calls us friends Praise the Spirit who among us to our hopes and fears attends. Jesus calls us to confess in word of life and Lord of all. Sharer of our flesh and frailness, saving all who fail of Tell his holy human story, tell his tales that all may hear. Tell the world that Christ in glory came to earth to meet us here. Jesus calls us to each other. Found in Him are no divides Race and class and sex and language Such are barriers He derives Join the hand of friend and stranger Join the hands of age and youth Join the faithful and the doubter in the common search for truth. 
Edmund Dean will lead us in our prayers of praise and confession. Let us pray. Lord God of creation, we concur with the Psalms to wrote, how excellent is your name in all the earth. There are times we cannot fathom the deep love you have for humanity, even after we have begun to destroy the beauty of your revelation to us through nature. You continue to call us to holiness, a term that defines your character, for Jesus said that we should be perfect like our Heavenly Father. We thank you for mission which began with you, and cascaded to the prophets, clergy, and laity. Today we cannot socialize with our brothers and sisters like we used to do, but you have made a way for us to remain connected through social media. Your wisdom continues to inspire people, calling them to have communion with you, even touching lives of people across the various divides of race and culture. In these efforts combined with your grace brought about by the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ. Your plan of grace and salvation has rescued us from the brink of death and brought everlasting life to every believer. What joy fills our hearts when we think of your love, kindness, faithfulness, patience, grace, and the adjectives leaves our vocabulary exhausted but you are all we need in our journey towards being Christ-like. Lord, empower us through your Holy Spirit to go beyond the boundaries we have set for ourselves and declare to the world that there is power, forgiveness, liberation, and healing for all who believe in Christ Jesus. Great is your name and worthy of being praised. How excellent is your name in all the earth. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us pray our prayers of confession. Lord, you have created this world as a perfect place and placed humankind as the stewards of your creation to care for the things that belong to you. That's nature and people. And how we have failed in our ability to handle this job description because we have omitted to do the things that please you. Some of us have ravaged the world's resources because of greed and to show profits ahead of safety, putting the lives of people at risk. We have also judged people based on their color, ignoring the hurt and resentment it caused. And right across the world, nations are appalled by the treatment of diverse individuals. And even in our own country, Soldiers have killed a man in Alexandra Township during level five of the restrictions without a suitable cause. Tolerance in our places of employment is disguised by hatred for some of our fellow workers. We are truly sorry for our past sins, the current sins and the things we have left undone. And we need your help and assistance to keep your creation as a top priority and become generous to every person, animal, and the rest of creation. Thank you for Jesus Christ who has full authority to forgive the sins of human beings and who show remorse for their sins. Lord, we are truly sorry for hurting you and our neighbors. And the guilt really hurts and we seek an alternative way of life that will bring about transformation ordained by you. May the Holy Spirit be our constant guide, for Paul said that we should walk by the Spirit, and that is acquiring a new standard of purity, since the old way of life has been discarded. We desire to become good, and therefore request the total forgiveness of our sins, and the healing that flows from it, should be a huge comfort to our hearts and minds. We thank you for the message of liberation that will see us become more like Jesus, and we remain grateful for your words of grace spoken to us. My child, your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. 
Amen, and thanks be to God. We sing a hymn based on Micah chapter 6, verse 8. You have shown us, O Lord, what is good, to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. You have shown us, O God, what is good. You have shown us, O Lord, what you require. You have heard all our songs, how we long to worship you. Yet you've told us the offering you desire. To do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with you, God. You said to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with you, God. You have shown us the riches of your love. You have shown us your heart for those in need. Lord, you're opening our ears to the cries of the poor. You have called us to be your hands and feet. To do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with you, God. Said to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with you, God. To the oppressed and the broken, to the widow and the orphan, let the river of your justice flow through us. To the oppressed and the broken, to the widow and the orphan. Let the river of your justice flow through us To do justly and to love mercy And to walk humbly with you, God You said to do justly and to love mercy And to walk humbly with you And to love mercy and to walk humbly with you, God. I've invited Stuart Cummings to lead us in the dedication of our offering today. And I thank you as a church for your continued generous contributions to our church funds. Good morning, church. Please join me in praying for our offering this morning. Generous Father, you are a provider and giver of all things, and we humbly ask that you accept these gifts and use them to your glory. Your word makes it clear that every good and every perfect gift comes from you. May you multiply these gifts so it may bring food to the hungry, shelter and warmth to the homeless, comfort and healing to the sick. Just as you've multiplied the offering of bread and fish and fed thousands. The Bible says that we should bring our tithes and offerings to your storehouse and you will send down your blessings upon blessings. May the peace of God reign in our lives, the love of God surround us, the Spirit of God empower us and the joy of God uphold us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In Leviticus 27.30 it says, A tithe of everything, whether Grain from the soil or fruit from the land belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. Give generously as you are able. Thank you and God bless. Pat Smith will lead us in our scripture reading for today from Matthew chapter 9 and 10. Good morning everyone. This morning reading is from Matthew chapter 9 verse 35 and chapter 10 1 to 8. Jesus urges the disciples to pray for workers. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless 
like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. He called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, Cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. Thanks be to God for his word. We're blessed today to have Reverend Mpumalelo Maswabi from the Viticlip Society in the Fredenberg part of our circuit. Uh, he and I will have a discussion on Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, really to the end of chapter 9. Uh, about what this means for us as humans and also in the light of COVID-19 and the crisis around us right now and also in the light of the, uh, the concern around systemic racism in the world and in America. So we also talk about the, the Black Lives Matter concept and uh, everybody responds quickly to that, but all lives matter. But what we are saying when we talk about Black Lives Matter is saying that there is a problem in the world with the way that black lives are valued. And so we lift up the value of black lives or we draw attention to the problem. And hopefully this generation will be able to bring a world of justice. And we reflect on what God would have us do to bring that justice to bear. Welcome Reverend Maswabi. Thank you for joining us at Table Be Methodist Church today. So good to see you. Thank you very and I uh, trust it's all warm and good in Friedenberg. Yes, sir. thank you very much, Gus, for hosting me. It's quite um, well in Friedenberg. Um, a little bit cold, but yeah, we are seeing it through. Thank you very much. Okay. And we are yes, very uh, glad to hear that uh, Tembi, our circuit steward, came out of ICU. How's she doing? Yes, sir. Um, she is doing quite well. Um, she's even, she even has a phone back with her uh, right now at the moment. So she is still communicating with us. And um, we are thankful that um, she's out of the ICU now. Yeah, it make, makes this whole COVID situation feel a lot more real. I mean, yes, it's, it's a lot more real because it's now in church. It's now affecting members of our church. It's not, it's not people that are out there. It's now people that we know, people that are circuit stewards, people that are treasurers, people that are. So it's it's, it's hitting home now. But thank you again for being with us, and I'll just say a prayer for us as we begin our discussion. So, loving God, thank you so much that Mpumalelo and I can meet together to talk about your word and to talk about what it means for us as Christians in the world today. And Lord, sometimes in the face of these overwhelming problems, we feel completely helpless. We thank you that in helplessness, all we can do is call to you in prayer and ask for your wisdom, that you would give us the words, the, the, the deeds, the, the attitudes that we need to bring your kingdom to our world today. Amen. And uh, we read from verse 35. And these are exciting um, missions that he calls the, the, the disciples to go on. So we see in verse 35, Jesus teaches in the synagogues, and he proclaims the good news of the kingdom. Uh, do black lives matter in the kingdom of God? That's a question. Mm. I'd love your thoughts on that. Yes, sir. Black lives um, in the kingdom of God do matter. And, and that, that is 
what the kingdom of God should be like, a platform way or a space where the issues that we face today, systemic racism, um, um, issues of exclusion, issues of um, one thinking that they are superior than others, um, issues of one thinking that they can dominate others will be secluded and will be sidelined and we will only be having one human race. We will be only seeing each other as creations of God, but making sure that first, Black lives matter, because when Black lives do matter, then all lives will matter. Black lives matter, as far as I understand, does not think that all lives don't matter. Black lives matter. No. It says all lives matter, but yes, says that, that at the moment we can see that... that um, not all lives matter, yes. That the way the world is, if yes. black people die, are more likely to die of COVID because of uh, yes, sir. medical uh, care and nutrition yes. and poverty and all yes. of those things. So we're saying if we can't... Uh, so Black yeah. Lives Matter doesn't say that, that other lives do not matter. Uh, yes, sir. It, it's saying there's a problem here, and we actually need mm-hmm. to start realizing that these lives, these lives matter. There's yes, no sir. no place in the kingdom of God for some lives not to matter. Uh, no. If if Jesus is the King who loves mm-hmm. all people, uh, mm-hmm. who died for all people, then yes. if we see that some people are valued less than others, we need to to address that that issue. Need to address that. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, thank you. And I, you know what, I like the way this verse continues in verse 35, curing every mm. disease and every sickness. And yes. like, I think as I've grown up, I've come to realize that, that I grew up, I was born in 76, on the 18th of June, 1976. So my birthday's coming, ah. don't forget that. Ah. <laughs> my, my, my father tells me that that as he stood in the waiting room at the hospital in 1976, he saw smoke rising from from Soweto, from what happened yes, on the 16th of June, 1976. Yes. And, and I was born into this context of South Africa. And mm-hmm. the news media, everything that I received, you know, school, curriculum, everything, uh, planted racism in me. Yes. And uh, Peter's story was quite uh, helpful in talking about racism as a, as a disease. Uh, and, and so I have to say that because I was raised in this country that is infected with this disease, I yes. cannot pretend not to be racist. We're evangelical Christians. We believe in the power of the gospel to cure diseases and every yes. sickness. But how mm-hmm. has knowing Jesus cured cured you of the disease of of racism how the gospel assists in 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 curing the sickness is is looking at the person of christ is is looking at who christ is um christ the liberator do, do, do you know i think the most powerful thing about the Gospels is seeing how Jesus Christ challenges the norms of society. How Jesus Christ stood and challenged systems that were in place to, to, to belittle others and, and, and magnify others. And I think in him doing that, Jesus Christ stands out in the gospel as the character that we want to be like. Sometimes when you drive, if I can give you an example, um, it also happens to me. I'm at the robot, I'm in my car, um, my, 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 uh, my, my doors are not locked, and then you see someone who's begging coming to your window, coming to ask for money. Do you know what, what I do? The first thing I do is click lock the doors mm. because mm. B- because in my head i associate this person with something negative some they're gonna hurt mm. me christ mm. would make sure that the person comes into his car 
without thinking mm-hmm. of I'm going to be robbed, without thinking about I might be killed, without thinking about all those things, but Christ will challenge the status quo and say, I'm going to invite this person into my car. Give him a hot bath, um, um, mm. educate him, save him, um, um, mm. and make sure, show this person that even in your situation, you are loved. We mm. are being shown that God throughout history has always mm. been a God that wants to liberate us, not only mm. from out there, but also liberate us from ourselves. Mm. And, mm. And, and, and hence, I, I, I always say, there's always a danger of claiming that you are Christian, but not wanting to change. Because if you are a Christian, but not challenged to change, you are lying to yourself. You are not a Christian. I think the Holy Spirit nudges me. You know. Yes. Uh, yes. You have a thought, and then you then you just go, ah, no. <laughs> you know, yeah. there's something wrong with that thought, or you have yes. an attitude. And yes. I, I think we. What I've realized about the work of the Holy Spirit is the more we ignore the work of the Holy Spirit, the less we yes. hear from the Spirit. So if we say, That's Holy true. Spirit, show me when I am being a racist. Yes. <laughs> you know, expose that. Yes. Reveal that yes. to me. And I know for me, uh, at university, we had a cell group at Rosebank Methodist Church. And it was the first mm-hmm. time I'd sat in a multicultural group. And we all sat down and we asked, what are you, what are you scared of? That was the first yeah. thing that we sat and spoke about. And, yes. and we were all scared about failing our exams. We were all worried yes. about not finding someone to love in yeah. our, our old yeah. age. Yeah. And, and thanks to the church, and I know it sounds really stupid, but for the first time, I realized that we're all human. Uh, this recognition of, of mutual being. Yes. And that's what... Yes. The, 36 carries on, verse 36, when he Mm. saw the crowds, he had compassion for them. And I just love that word. He had, uh, Mm -hmm. it it comes from the word for bowels. His his stomach turned for them, you know. And Mm -hmm. and I think when we love people in the way of Jesus, our stomachs will turn for them. If we realize that they are human like us, they've got stomachs like us. We're we're the same inside, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then we continue with... um, because they were harassed and helpless. And I think those two words there are, are really important words that we don't fully um, appreciate yes. because they actually refer not just to sort of being, I don't know, like having flies bothering you, but to yes. actually being oppressed. To being, yes. being violently treated. Um, yes. Jesus is, is talking about people who have got this Roman occupation and these people are beating them and kind of using them as slaves and overtaxing them, yes. all of these things. Mm-hmm. And, and helpless is, it refers to being thrown, like it's like they're thrown about. So that, <laughs> like yes. It's, yes. They're being beaten up uh, like sheep without a shepherd. And I think that phrase reminds us very well of, of Ezekiel uh, 34 about the false okay. shepherds. And now this in Ezekiel doesn't just talk about the, the priests but also about the, the, the political leadership of Israel. Uh, yes. Should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the sheep. Um, um, when we spoke about the liberating Christ, um, and not forgetting that this was uh, during a time when the Roman Empire, um, as you said, were, were, were overtaxing, were, 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 were very much um, oppressing them hugely. But also because of that oppression from the Roman Empire, their own leaders started working for the Roman Empire. So they didn't protect them anymore. They didn't um, um, speak out for them. And and when Christ sees this, his compassion is towards that. Um, if you look into it, you'll see that it's like Christ is saying that, to say, um, I've given an opportunity for human beings to be shepherds, but they have failed dismally. Mm. Human beings have failed dismally in showing that they can care for my sheep. Now God is saying, I have now come 
Mm. My son, Jesus Christ, as the liberator, is here to show mm. us what being a shepherd truly means. That Jesus comes to be the shepherd of the people who live in a world that will always be corrupt. And I think there's this idea that we had in South Africa in 94, mm. that, uh, that if, if the government changed, the nation would change. But there was still this whole system that continues to be in place today that that perpetuates uh, uh, poverty and yeah. extreme wealth, extreme poverty and extreme wealth, and the, the gap between rich and poor gets wider and wider and wider. It gets to the point where, where it's going to explode. Uh-huh. Our shepherd is Jesus. And then yes. I love what Jesus goes on to say in verse 37. Uh-huh. Uh, you're, the, you, you're the ones, you know, if we're talking about sheep without a shepherd, he's clearly yes. referring back to Ezekiel 37, saying that yes. leadership is corrupt, it's stuffed, it's not going to do anything good for you. You've got to mm-hmm. handle this yourself, people. And, yes. and I think there's something for us to to do as church about organizing ourselves as a church that yes. changes the world, that, mm-hmm. that brings about meaningful change by... Mm-hmm doing the work of God, preaching mm. the gospel of the kingdom of God, um, mm. but also living the life of the kingdom of God, which, which mm. is a difficult call. You know, Jesus. Yes. So mm. here we are, you, you, who mm. are listening to this, this today. Mm. You are the laborer, and, and you are to ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Mm. And that's not just about... Um, getting people saved to go to heaven when they die. We are called to be um, partners with Jesus Christ um, in becoming those laborers that go out and do something. Um, hence I say, um, Christ is, is calling us. He wants us to be like a nation without within a nation, a, a community within a community, a, a, a kingdom within a kingdom, do you understand? Because he says that we the only way that we can change the world is for the world to see this community as an example, so that the community of the world can now begin to say, that is what we want for ourselves. The Holy Spirit. If you have it, if you are genuinely in love with God, if you are genuinely in love with Jesus, the Holy Spirit does not want you standing stagnant. The Holy Spirit will take you into a journey of expressing that love, of you being that person that sees, but I have too many blankets and some do not even have one. And you will not be doing this so that you feel good afterwards, but you're doing it because you see that this is your call and this is mm. what we are called to. Yes, sir. Amen. The one thing that I'm going to take away from this conversation, especially is verse 37 of chapter 9, that the mm. laborers are not just those who go out to be evangelists, to, mm. to, you know, to reap the harvest yes. of those who yes. might believe, but the mm. laborers are every single Christian, every single believer yes. could go to yes. their job, a policeman, uh, a mm. nurse, a, a politician, a teacher, mm. to, to teach this, this way of life, uh, yes. to bring change and transformation to our mm. land. And, and so, so mm. they come, each of us has this task of dealing with racism. We mm. need to conscientize, conscientize uh, because yes. we are in relationship with each other. We can, we can change our lives. We need to learn to, mm. to, to, to do these things. Um, mm. And so we, we teach the world that all lives truly matter because we recognize that those who are most oppressed, those who are struggling at this time, as we think about yes. black lives, um, mm. vulnerable mm. to COVID-19, especially if you consider the poverty that's on the yes. Uh, um, violence, etc., because of the problems that are on throughout the world and in ourselves. Uh, that uh, this this kingdom message can change our hearts and that we live 
Definitely. Yes. Thank you. Truly blessed. Thank you very much. And Thank please greet the, the, the family of Table View for me. Many loves for oh, you. Are, Thank you, very you are greeting them at the moment because they're going to watch you. <laughs> and then I'll invite you to lead us in a, in a prayer, if you don't mind. <laughs> would, you, you, sir. would you pray for us? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Let, us, let us pray. And now, dear merciful and ever-loving God, we come before you today with smiles, with the joy of the reading of how you, Lord Jesus, are a Lord that is always there to fill in the gaps when humans have failed this many. We thank you, Lord God, for the fact that you are standing up, you are rising up as our shepherd. When you see the struggles of people, that are seen as lower class, when you stand up and rise up and say, this is enough, I am now standing up for those that are marginalized in society. And we'd like to thank you, dear Lord, for that, because you are a Lord that is always there, always standing up for those that need someone to stand up for them. And I hope, dear Lord, that through conversations like these, people will not only listen to come up with excuses or listen so that um, it goes into their hearts but also does not stay there, but people will listen and a conviction will come into their heart so that they can reflect on what you truly want for us. And I pray, dear Lord, that you bless all of us today. Bless us, dear Lord, with the Holy Spirit so that we are challenged to change from within. Change us, dear Lord. Change us into who you want us to be in your kingdom. Change us, dear Lord, so that we can go out knowing that you have called all of us to be those that play pivotal parts in promoting your kingdom to the world. And I pray, dear Lord, at this time that you bless those that I need. Bless those that are struggling in the USA and even here in our country, those that I need, those that are hungry, those that are cold at this moment. Bless them, dear Lord. Be with them. Be with them, dear Lord. I pray this and many others in the beautiful name of my Lord and friend, Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Liberator. Amen. I'll invite Edmund Dean to lead us in our prayers of intercession. And after that, um, Patrick and Elsie Sinekin will lead us in the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray our prayers of intercession. Let us pray for all believers everywhere according to their need. Matchless God, we pray for the Universal Church, for its unity in Christ, sending a liberating message to ensure justice to all of those who are suffering unnecessary hardships, to fulfill its mission of compassion for its peoples, especially those who are suffering with the deadly coronavirus, HIV, Ebola, and other diseases, that the Holy Spirit will sustain all clergy and laity during these challenging times that may not grow, that they may not grow weary of their responsibilities of sharing the good news with those poor in spirit. We pray for our government and all leaders in authority, that they will be given wisdom to direct this nation and all nations in the way of justice and peace, that people may honor, love, respect, and seek the common good in each person. We pray for the health workers around the globe who have been right in the firing line regarding COVID-19 and who have succumbed to the disease. Provide guidance to the health ministries for a sustained and long lasting measures to assist the health workers to complete their work in safety as sick people require their valuable services. We too pray for those individuals whom we love and cherish even here in Table View for the lonely people in isolation and those who have suffered death, diseases and those left behind in bereavement. Lord, bring healing to those individuals and provide a merciful judgment for the departed. 
We hold up our family and friends to you and request protection for all of them. And we too remember all of those people we know and don't know who are without faith and help create opportunities for all believers to see the possibilities of ministering to them, spreading love into their hearts. Thank you for the generosity of people who donate resources regularly to those in need, and may they never tire, but keep on giving us the spirit guides and allows them to. We pray your blessing over these resources. Almighty God, we pray to you to cleanse and defend our church and to unite us all in a common bond of love and service that we may show forth your goodness and reveal your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We sing the hymn by Lauren Daigle. The, uh, called You Say. And uh, it's an important reminder as we live our lives, we hear many voices telling us who we are and what we should do and how we should think. And the one voice that tells us who we are and how we are is the voice of God. So no matter what's going on around you, pay attention to God who says you've got it, to God who says you are enough, to God who loves you so much that he would send his only son to die for you. I pray that you would be blessed and strengthened as you worship together and sing the song. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know You say I am love when I can't feel a thing You say I am strong when I think I am weak You say I am hell when I am falling short When I don't belong, oh, you say I am yours And I believe, oh I believe what you say of me I believe the only thing that matters now is everything you think of me in you I find my worth in you I find my identity taking all I have and now I'm laying it at your feet You'll have every failure, God And you'll have every victory oh, You say I am loved I can feel a thing You say I am strong When I think I am weak you say I am hell, and I am falling short When I don't belong, well, you say I am yours And I believe, I believe what you say of me I believe, I believe
believe, yes I believe what you say of me, I believe. So Talia will lead us in a closing prayer and benediction. I uh, look forward to seeing you during the week through this medium or please if you feel like giving me a call or, or chatting by email, don't hesitate to do so. I'd love to hear from you. Lord, we are kneeling at your feet this morning. We want to thank you for all you've done for us. Especially now in these dark times when the whole world seems to be in a turmoil. We know that you are in control and we see your grace and mercy at work. We know, Father, that we are sinners, but we know that you will forgive us. Create in us a new heart, refresh our souls and renew our spirit. We ask you to heal our past pains and heal our, uh, from the hurt and insecurities. We need you and we love you every day of our lives. Cover us with the precious blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, also our families and our friends. Keep keeping everyone safe from this virus and diseases. Please place our, your angels around all of us. Keep us from all the evil of this world. Let our thoughts be your thoughts. Our words be your words and be closer to you. We ask that our hearts be free from sadness, our bodies from sickness, and our minds clean of thinking, worries, and anxiety. Let our prayers rise up to you, and we believe that you will come to our rescue. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.